Hey Foreverlies! Hey Foreverlies! It is just Maddie in this video and today I'm going to be doing a QA. and a I haven't done one in quite some time and I actually had like a little tradition almost to do one a month. So I went ahead and I said ask me questions on my story as I do when I'm filming a Q&A. So we're going to see what people want to know. I don't remember the last time I've done a Q&A. It feels like it's been so long. But um <laughs> let's let's see what people want to know. Let's get into this little Q&A. <laughs> Do I watch other YouTubers? If so, who? Okay. I know I am a YouTuber, but I don't really watch other YouTubers. Please don't get mad at me. Um I don't go on YouTube much just as a whole. I guess TikTok and Netflix are kind of like taking over in a way. My views reflect that. <laughs> but um, whenever I do go on YouTube, I like to watch interviews, like celebrity interviews. Like I, I absolutely love Evan Peters and um, God, what's his name? Okay, Freddie Highmore. I love Evan Peters and Freddie Highmore. And I love hearing what they have to say. Evan Peters, it's more about, like, him just being adorable. Like, I love Evan Peters. But Freddie Highmore, I love listening to Freddie Highmore talk. He's so intellectual. He actually speaks, like, multiple languages. He's a genius. And just listening to him talk about, like, the characters he portrayed is just really cool to me. I'm more of a TV person. I don't really watch movies or YouTube videos. But I do watch a lot of TV. And two of my recent favorites have been um, Bates Motel and American Horror Story. So I like to kind of see the actors who portray these characters and see them in their own personality almost. Like that's that's what I'll go on on YouTube. Like I'll search Evan Peters interview and I just, I don't know, I don't watch like YouTubers or anything. So, sorry. Do I think I've had personal growth since Everly's been born? God, I feel like if you were to take me at 13 and me now and just do a side by side com side by side comparison, you would have two completely different people. I genuinely feel like I'm not the same person I was before I had Everly. So I think I've morphed into a completely different person with new values and just a different personality really. It just really changed me in so many ways and I'm so thankful for that. How is co-parenting going? It's going really well. Um, we actually filmed a video talking about co-parenting, so that'll be out later this month, early next month, and I'm excited for y'all to see it. I mean, we've grown a lot as people since we had Everly Me and her dad, and co-parenting was something that, I mean, we had to learn to be parents. We didn't know how to be parents, and then we had to learn to be co-parents. Usually you learn how to be parents before you learn how to co-parent. But we were learning both at the same time, and it was really hard, and it brought along, like, a lot of struggles. But we were also growing up at the same time, and as we grew up, we got more mature, and we were able to handle things a lot better. So I'd say co-parenting has gone pretty seamlessly lately. Like, Everly loves her dad, and we've been getting along. I mean, I love to see the relationship. It's, it's so sweet. He actually just posted on his story, um, he was giving her a bubble bath and he handed her a donut in the bath. <laughs> so he's definitely like the more fun parent. I'm the one who has to do like all the discipline and stuff, but it's fun to kind of see that balance happen even though like it's co-parenting, not really like, even though it's not like a married couple parenting, there's obviously going to be different parenting dynamics and everything. but co-parenting in different houses and still seeing like the dynamics between your different parenting styles is really interesting and it's cool to learn from. I feel like we've both learned from each other like I've learned from him. I, I don't know if he's learned from me but I'm sure he has like <laughs> if he's anything like me I mean I like to soak up everything like a sponge and kind of learn from everything <laughs> so it's been going really well. What did you do to become a better video editor? Absolutely nothing. I still use iMovie. I've used iMovie since I started my channel and haven't used anything else. I've used Final Cut Pro a few times, but I really just vibe with iMovie. 
Um, I guess just kind of learning when to put the cuts and like learning from experience in a way, seeing what does well, what doesn't, and what looks well on screen is good. You could like take classes, but I just kind of learned it by ear. Do I still stay in touch with the other Teen Mom YouTubers? Um, the main one that I stay in touch with is Kaylee. Like, me and Kaylee are, have always been pretty close, and I've never been like the person to text all the time, so some people and I did grow apart just because they felt like I wasn't really putting in anything, but in reality I was just maybe going through something and felt kind of unwanted so I didn't reach out or something like that, but I mean, I'm friendly with everybody, I don't have like any beef, um, but it's hard for me to really stay in touch with people, especially when it's a large group of people, but I do, I do chat with um, a lot of my Teen Mom friends every once in a while. How is my mental health doing? They also put like a sweet little message in there saying it's really hard to see someone as wonderful and strong as you struggle. We love you. Thank you. Um, <sighs> there's been a lot of stuff happening in my life that I keep private. I mean, I don't... I don't really share everything that happens. I share a lot. Like, I definitely overshare. I share way more than I should for somebody who's posting their life on the internet. But there's been so many things just back to back to back. And it just feels like the world is trying to swallow me whole sometimes. And I'm not really struggling with my mental health per se, but stress. Stress has definitely been there. And it's not really from anything internal, it's from a lot of external factors, maybe a few internal factors, just kind of like emotions and stuff like that. And it's hard to realize that whenever something hard happens to you, especially for somebody like me, like I kind of taught myself to repress my emotions so I could see, seem strong, but those emotions are going to stay there until you feel them. So I kind of have been teaching myself to feel my emotions because so many crazy things have been happening lately. Just a ton of, oh my god, so much unexpected stuff that's totally going to shape me as a person and family stuff, whatnot, so many things. So I've been a little bit, I haven't been depressed, but I've definitely been more emotional than usual because of all these crazy things in my life and how fast April is about approaching where I'm gonna be 18 and it's just gonna be like this whole new chapter it's kind of it's kind of scary <laughs> when life hands you something hard it's gonna be something that's heavy it's like heavy to carry but when you carry something heavy you get stronger and eventually it feels like it's not heavy at all it just feels like nothing <laughs> I kind of feel like carrying all these heavy things makes me stronger in the end and I feel like I've always carried so many heavy things around with me but after a while, you, they don't even feel heavy. They feel they feel light, and it's just kind of a past experience. So yeah, I'm just waiting until everything that I'm carrying doesn't feel like it's a thousand pounds. What college do I plan to go to? That's a good question. Um, for my associate's degree, I'm definitely going to be going to a community college. Um, for like bachelors, or if I decide to go on from bachelors, um. I honestly don't know because I kind of missed out on the whole high school thing so I never really got to learn about colleges and what colleges I like so I'm not too sure um, preferably I would do something online just like an online bachelor's course so that that would be ideal it doesn't really matter to me like getting into a prestige college like oh my god I'm gonna go to Harvard like I just want an education for cheap how is my weight loss journey going um, okay, so when I gained weight, it was fast. It wasn't just like, oh, I gained 20 pounds last year. It was like, oh, I gained 20 pounds last month. And it was because of a medication I had started taking. So that, that had a really hard impact on me, and I tried everything to kind of get that to go back down, but I would still struggle with binge eating. And that was something that kind of kept it on me. Like, I had always lost and gained weight really fast. Like, if I'm going to go through a weight change, it usually happens pretty fast. Um, so, whenever I started my new medicine, 
for ADHD, it helped a lot with me controlling binge eating. And it helped me lose those 20 pounds. Um, it's, I still don't kind of like realize that I lost the weight. And my medicine also speeds up your metabolism. So I guess it's just a combination of all of that. And then there were so many stressful things happening that made me lose my appetite. So it would be hard for me to eat. And even though I was stressed out, I wasn't binge eating like I usually would when I was stressed out. It wasn't me like deciding, oh, I'm going to lose weight. I had already started implementing healthy eating habits before I started w losing weight like crazy. Just kind of like not eating fast food. Um, and just following a healthy diet. And then whenever I started my new medicine, I was stressed out, all that stuff, it, it kind of all came together and made me lose weight. It wasn't really a healthy weight. A lot of it was from a loss of appetite from stress. So, yeah. But I do feel a lot better now because I was really struggling with my image so bad and I just didn't feel like myself. And it was hard for me to accept the way I looked and love the way I looked and that's something that I'm huge on, self-love. And this made me feel a lot better about myself, honestly. And I, I told myself, like... I am more than what I look like, but for me, when I look a certain way, it makes me feel a lot better about myself. And then there's a lot of people that, um, they'll comment on my pictures and say, oh my god, you are you look so beautiful and slim, like, was I not beautiful when I had gained a few extra pounds? Like, comments like that hurt, and it kind of like, I don't know, I feel like your weight doesn't define your beauty, and it's kind of sad that people say, like, stuff like that. It's definitely not, like, a healthy way, but, I mean... I guess the medicine I took before made me gain weight, then I took another medicine that made me lose weight, so kind of even that out. And then I also gained a lot of weight on birth control, and I don't think I'm ever going to lose that. I think it's just like a hormonal thing, <laughs> so yeah, but let's go on to the next question. I am a lot happier with myself though, although I don't recommend getting super stressed out to where you can't eat to lose weight. It's not smart. Don't do it. Are you going to have any more kids, and how many would you want in the future? Um, yes, I want more kids so bad. I just, it just sucks that you have to have somebody else to have kids with, and I can't just grow a kid out of my arm like a cactus grows their spawns out of their arm. I'm not sure when. I, I love the idea of adoption. Um, I don't think I'm allowed to adopt, though. I could get a sperm donor, but I think there's, like, age limits and it's expensive. So I might just go on eBay. <laughs> Should I get an eBay sperm donor? No. I want like two to three more kids. I feel so bad that Everly doesn't have a sibling like close in age to her, but eventually I will be having more children. I want a big family. Has Everly been sleeping in her bed? No. <laughs> I posted an Instagram story the other day. Like, big girl says she's gonna sleep in her bed. Literally 10 minutes later, she was in my bed asleep. She just won't do it. So, somebody asked when I'm getting my GED. So, I like saw a drama page talking about like, oh, Maddie hasn't updated us on her GED. She said that she had the test scheduled. She probably failed it. And that's why she's not telling us. No. Got rescheduled because of COVID. And then I got rescheduled again. And again. And then the testing center closed. And I wasn't able to reschedule. So, I ended up just um, continuing on with my studying or whatever. And there is an online testing option now. So, I will be taking the online test. I didn't fail anything. I actually took a, um, on the official site, you have to finish um, four practice tests before you take the GED. I finished two, two of those, and um, I didn't study for either of them. Because I, I was studying for my GED, like, early last year. I didn't study for the practice tests. I just wanted to, like, see what I knew. So, if you're, like... In the yellow, you're okay to take the test. Like, you might pass. If you're in the red, you're not good to take the test. If you're in the green, you're most likely going to pass. And if you're in, like, the far green, you're doing awesome. And I was in the far green on both of them. So, not a flex or anything, but I didn't even study. <laughs> Sorry, that, that's so cringy. But um, I am planning on getting that soon. I just need to kind of let life calm down a little bit before I take on something else. Plus, if I, when I enroll in college, I don't even think I'll be able to enroll until the fall now. I was planning on doing it this spring, but 
COVID. How was my dating life? I haven't... I've I think I've talked to, like, one person since my last boyfriend, and it wasn't even, like, an official talking to them. And it turned out he had, like, a plan to use me for clout. So that didn't work out. Um, but I haven't really talked to anybody since. I'm not really looking for anything either. I mean, I've always told myself... I'm not going to find something if I'm chasing it actively and then I chase it and it doesn't work so I'm just waiting until something comes to me I feel like dating is hard especially as a mom I feel like if I am to ever get married I'm it's gonna be either me meeting somebody out of nowhere and falling completely in love or kind of falling for somebody I already know, like maybe somebody I went to school with or somebody that I've known for a long time that I already am kind of close to because I feel like getting to know a new person would be kind of hard. <laughs> that sounds so crappy, but I don't know, I'm just being patient. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit impatient. I would like to fall in love now. Please. If you hear me. I've been good. When do I plan on moving out? This is a hard question because I turn 18 in April so I can officially become a homeowner but there's still some little roadblocks to that. I have to have credit. I have to have a down payment. And all that stuff. So I just kind of have to, once I turn 18, I'm gonna start looking into it and I honestly I don't know how long it's going to take. I could be moved out the same month I turn 18, or it could take longer because I, I don't know how the heck I'm going to get a credit score or a down payment. I mean, I've been saving for a down payment, but like, I don't know how big it's going to be. I don't know what the process is going to look like. So, I don't know. I, I thought I could put a timeline on this, but I, I can't. So, as soon as it's realistic, I will be. I have been looking at houses, so... I want to move into the same neighborhood I'm in now so I can stay close to my parents. Somebody said, what is your favorite butt bone in your body to crack? My back. I have so much back pain. <laughs> I was at the chiropractor today actually and he cracked my back. But um, my back, 100%. 1000%. Does it ever feel awkward to hang out with Isaac when Everly is around? Um, <laughs> if you don't know Isaac's Everly's dad. I mean, at first, sometimes it does. Like, when we first started co-parenting, it felt really awkward. And I just didn't know what to say. I just, like, was, like, scared. Um, it's not really awkward anymore. I mean, we get along really well. I mean, except for all the fights we've been in. But now, we get along pretty well. It's not really awkward anymore, but I, I still get, like, nervous. I don't know why. I guess I just always get nervous around males, especially when it's the father of my child. I don't know, it's not really awkward though. There's always something to talk about. Can I do a cartwheel? I can do a cartwheel, but I'm, I'm not going to do a cartwheel. Um, I just put on these jeans that did not fit me when I ordered them. They wouldn't even fit over my thighs when I ordered them. And they fit now. And I feel like if I do a cartwheel, they're going to rip in half. So, yes, I can do a cartwheel, but no, I will not do a cartwheel. Okay, so somebody said, you've seemed a lot happier in your body lately. What, ha what helps with your confidence? I guess realizing that I was in control. I mean, a big thing, I have OCD, and it manifests as kind of like a control complex. And when I'm not in control, I get scared. And that's like... It's kind of like an obsession with being in control, and I can't stand not being in control of something. And for a long time I felt like I wasn't in control of my body, and the way I looked, and the way I ate. And I kind of realized I'm, I'm like literally the owner of this house. I, I mean, I can eat healthy. I can have healthy routines. I can change myself for the better and feel better. And just realizing that I'm in control of how I feel and realizing that I'm not in control of the way I was born. Like, 
the way my nose looks when I smile, the way my nostrils kind of spread out. I'm not in control of that. I can't change that. I'm kind of realizing that I'm not in control of things, but I am in control of other things. It helped me a lot. I'm kind of realizing that I look at my face so much. I am so familiar with my face and I'm so used to it. So I, I don't know what people think when they look at me. I mean, when I look in the mirror and think I look ugly, I could walk into the store and somebody could see me and think I'm the most beautiful thing they've ever seen. I'm too comfortable with how I look that I don't really know how I look to somebody for the first time. So I kind of realized that and I try not to be like overconfident, but I have to tell myself that just to kind of keep myself happy. <laughs> what is my biggest regret? That's hard. That's really hard. I don't think I have like one thing that's the biggest regret. But I definitely have lots of regrets. Um, one of them being not appreciating the money I was making from YouTube when I was younger. Um, I, I wasn't very smart about that because I was like this 15 year old girl getting all this money for the first time and I, w I was really materialistic and I feel like I should have been saving. I shouldn't have been going out and buying clothes. I should have been spending it on experiences and kind of just whenever I had all these awesome opportunities I didn't realize how awesome they were and I kind of regret being so naive but then again that's something that happens when you grow up another big regret is just kind of the way I handled a lot of things in um, my co-parenting relationship with Everly's dad I, I was so rude and so petty and I feel like there's a lot of things that I've damaged just because of the way I reacted to things and I kind of... I was hurt so I let myself be angry and that anger made me mean. And I really regret not just kind of sharing how I felt and being open. I feel like I should have actually shared how I was feeling, why I was hurting instead of just being horrible and mean. That's, that's a really big regret. But, I mean, I learned from that, and I might have never learned that if I didn't go through that. How was your important video call yesterday? I had posted on my Instagram story about this video interview that I had, and I was, like, so stressed out for it, and, um, it, it went really well. I was kind of, it was weird, because I didn't really know how to act, because it was over Zoom, and I kept, like, looking at myself fixing my hair like I do now in my viewfinder. And it was nerve-wracking, but it went really well. That's all I'll say. Um, if this thing does work out, it could be really cool. And it's totally out of the realms of like the whole YouTube and social media world, so I think it would be awesome Like if it works out. So just kind of manifest that for me, pray for me, hope that this opportunity works out for me. Um, it's like pretty, it's really big, I really hope it works out, so yeah, that's all I can really say, I don't want to like get myself in trouble <laughs> to where it won't work out. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for this video, um, I hope you all enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel, um, I, I post twice a week, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but sometimes on Mondays. And Thursdays, sometimes on Mondays and Fridays, sometimes on... It's, it's just twice a week, basically, is all you need to know. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.